Hi there. We have a few insulators today. Different to the ones you normally see on you on uh, YouTube. They're mainly low voltage ones. Not all of them, but some of them are. The brown one would be on one of the distribution poles. Possibly supporting 250 volts. Uh, not a high not a very high voltage one shown by the fact it's only a um, single single uh, shed there's no um, there's no extras there's no there's nothing underneath it's just a basic insulator which would support one conductor these smaller ones probably used for a low voltage distribution at some time Right now we come to the more the easier ones. What we have here is what's called egg insulators, obviously because they're shaped like an egg. Um, and these would have been used on aerials in the old days. The old radios you had indoors you used to have a length of wire running down the garden, probably a hundred foot, and each at each end you'd fit one of these on to actually insulate the bare copper wire from earthing down the, the pole and it kept it completely isolated. You might have one or two of these in, in line so it, it was really clear from shorting out. Um, made them in various sizes, um, that's obviously one of the smaller ones the wire is put round and, and goes through the hole and you put it through the hole, wrap it, take it round there and twist it together so one wire comes out there. The other wire you would put through that hole the other way. So if the insulator was to break the aerial would still stay up there because there's like a loop between the two wires. You would never connect it, twist it round that part and that part. Some people used to do this, they just didn't know. But they should wire them, as I say, so they're looped. So if that was, was to crack or break, the area would still remain up. And this is probably why you'd have more than one in line. So if you had some in line, if one broke, it wouldn't really matter because the other one would take over. So they were used on aerials, the different types. Now also they could have used this style. These were aerial insulators as well. There's a nice glass one there. Two porcelain ones, glass and another porcelain. Have a closer look, it gives you an idea of the size. You, One wire would fasten to each end and it'd be wired up as the other insulator to form an aerial with the each end being insulated. The end that goes in goes down to the house there will be a down lead which would go through the window frame in an insulated uh, piece of ebonite. They used ebonite in those days You'd then take it via a uh, switch, which was a lightning protector switch. It would be a rain, so if there was any fear of a storm or lightning, you could take the aerial out of service. That would prevent the receiver being damaged. It also incorporated what's called a spark gap on, on the switch, so if there was a surge of juice you would it would just spark across there and go to earth that was the idea behind it the theory behind it these are a similar device these were either used as an insulator the same as those other ones or they may have been kept they may have been used for twin feeder where we had the two aerial wires together feeding down and 
the wires would go between there and keep them separated so you'd have several of those it would actually look like a ladder between there but I'm not too certain on that one now the insulators we have here the small this small one is also an aerial insulator but it's called a shell insulator it's the same size as the egg insulator but slightly different design wired up the same way it has a spring in it the idea of that was to take any uh, if there was a wind or anything like that it would allow the aerial to perhaps blow about and the spring would take up any tension so that it, it would stay up there it wouldn't actually blow down or break the tension was taken up by the spring and it's insulated at both sides so that would just be put in line of the aerial a larger one which would have possibly been an aerial an aerial insulator the other three would be for higher power this one I got when I was well I think I was about nine or ten at the time I visited my aunt's house she lived in Manor Park part of London and the main road through there was the Romford Road and they had a lot of what I call junk shops army surplus interesting places I remember one place called the Ben Salmon Radio long since gone um, there was Duke's, Ra uh, Duke's TV they were down there uh, the Romford Road Manor Park anyhow this was in one of the shops neither of those it was a totally different shop but it was near them and this was in a box outside I think it cost me nine pence and that's the old money it's made by a company called PHT which I've been unable to find out anything about it's the largest shell insulator that I've got the reason that's white is when these are made they're obviously fired in a kiln and that part would be where they stood down they were glazed but obviously they couldn't be glazed where they were rested down how they did yeah there are this is the same this has got the exactly the same again it's a bit grubby and that's the same so that's where they were laid in the kiln where they were fired these would be well the, the large green one this large green one would have possibly been used on uh, the guy line on a pole which, which was carrying high voltage stuff um, you'd go through that to completely insulate the end of the cable or the the guy rope which is holding the pole up so it'd be isolated from the top if it did short out if it became alive this would stop the voltage getting down normally they use what is called a barrel in insulator and that's one I haven't got it's like an intermediate shape between the shell and the egg insulator so there we are, just a quickie on those. As I say, I know in, in America there's loads of collectors, but they're mainly the ones found on the poles. There's some beautiful ones, some are, well, the most of them are glass, but they're coloured glass. And that, and as I say, that they are quite an interest in, in themselves. Anyhow, once again, thanks for looking. Any comments, please make. Any questions please ask, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thank you.